Uh, we're glad to see so many faces in here, um, and uh, well, uh, we'll give a warm welcome to Fredrik Dahlborg, CEO at Bull Diagnostics. Welcome. Thank you very much, Victor. Uh, so thanks everyone for coming and, um, th and, and listening to this presentation. We'll go through it rather quickly and then uh, have questions afterwards. Uh, we also have Christina Rubenhag here. She's the CFO of the company and can help me with detailed questions and so on. So I will start with uh, the company and then go a little bit into some comments around the, the second quarter results as well. So um, Bull Diagnostics, we're a growth company specializing in near patient diagnostics. Uh, and that means we develop, manufacture, and, and, and market complete solutions for, for blood count, uh, and um, both in the human and veterinary market. And, and uh, quality and reliability has really been a, uh, uh, something we are known for in the market. So we are, um, we are as I mentioned, focused on this fast-growing segment, the near patient uh, diagnostics, which is uh, the smaller hospitals or the uh, doctor's offices, primary care units and so on, not the biggest type uh, uh, academic hospitals and so on that you'll find in a, in a major city in the Western world. Um, so we, we, uh, product, we, we make the products in, in Sweden at the, at the two manufacturing sites here, and then we have another one in Florida. Uh, and we are one single provider for everything required for, to do this blood test, uh, and that means instruments, uh, consumables and also controls, which is really an artificial blood. So we have capacity to develop and manufacture all those things internally. So the near patient uh, or decentralized diagnostics market then. So um, we are focused on the decentralized hematology, the smaller, the smaller hospitals and doctor's offices and so on. It's a relatively small market compared to the centralized market, the, the big hospitals. However, the growth in our segments, the decentralized market, is, is quite strong. And that is driven by a few factors. <laughs> we do see, of course, uh, a, a large number of, of uh, potential customers, more than 100,000 small or medium-sized labs globally. Of course, we are also benefiting from these macro trends that you can see, uh, aging population, uh, increasing demand for diagnostics and healthcare, uh, and increased access, of course, to healthcare in emerging markets, as well as uh, um, the near patient diagnostics attractiveness to both uh, patient and healthcare system in the more developed world. So, as I mentioned, we do focus on the smaller hospitals, the physician office lab, primary care, urgent care, and within some of the new products that we're launching, which are easy to use uh, and uh, have, are based on the finger stick technology, so not blood, a tube of blood from the vein, but rather a drop, drop of blood from the finger. Uh, we can also move into areas like home care, elderly care, and potentially pharmace uh, pharmacies as well. And a driver here is, of course, uh, an environment where patients are looking for quick results of the test and easy access to, to, to testing. Uh, if you go to a doctor's office without testing abilities today, you'll have to uh, the doctor will have to send the test into the central lab, wait a day or two for the results, and you have to get back and get your prescription. Our uh, systems do allow for, for the results in within less than a minute. So these are some of the drivers that we see in, in the more uh, developed markets, uh, driving towards more decentralized testing. In the, in the emerging markets, which has been a very strong growth driver for us, uh, we of course see that uh, the number of tests per uh, person is much, much lower. So in US and Western Europe, we see uh, roughly double or three times the number of tests compared to, uh, to, uh, to Asia. Uh, so, uh, and this, this type of test is done uh, very frequently. So there's actually billions of tests of this type done globally each year. So the product portfolio that we provide looks like this. Uh, the, the, the core of the technology is uh, blood test instruments for what, what we call three-part, which is a, a level of um, the level of type of test you make on the white blood cells. You can also do a five-part, which is very similar, but gives you a little bit more granularity when it comes to the white cells. Can help you in in, in uh, analyzing, for example, allergies a little bit more. Uh, this is our main products right here. And you see the products with the blue star are the ones that we have launched within the recent 12 months period. So you can see a lot of new products have, have been launched. Uh, we have had in the five-part area 
the Quintus system, which is somewhat uh, getting a little bit older, um, uh, while we have launched these two new brand new systems in, in partnership with an external partner. Uh, we have launched two new platforms in the veterinary segment, which represents about 10% of our business, but it is growing really fast. And then we have two quite exciting and more novel technologies that have also recently been added to the portfolio. One is a collaboration with the Cellavision, a company that many of you are familiar with, a new technology that they have developed for the decentralized lab. And since the decentralized lab is our core market globally, we are adding this to our portfolio. And we also have the Spinny technology, which, which is a test, an even more simple to use test, very small device, very cheap, but can, can do multiple tests in one instrument. So not only the, the hematology test, but also tests for, for diabetes, uh, infection control, and so on. So more tests in one device. So uh, many, many new products in the portfolio, but these are still the main workhorse of, of our business. And we're also working on a major R&D project that will over time replace these two systems and these with one uh, one joint platform. So looking at the second quarter results, we are pleased to see that the growth continues in a good way. We had in 2018 uh, a flat development, no growth really, driven by uh, some weakness in the Russian market causing, caused by trouble with the distributor we had there and one of our product platform, the Quintus, that has some quality issues. Those two have now been addressed. And combined with the additional products, we do see growth is, is strong. So we had 11% growth in the second quarter and 19% in the first quarter. Uh, so, so a good start to the year and back in growth again. Instrument uh, unit sales grew by 14%, which is also great because we do sell um, the instruments and then we see uh, for many years afterwards a follow-on sale of the consumables. So grow, growing the instrument install base is critical to grow the business. Consumables grew by about 5% in the quarter, a um, little bit weaker perhaps, but um, the, the first quarter was very, very strong. Uh, so in total for the year to date, we're growing at 17%. And the dynamic is such that instrument sales are a bit less profitable, consumable sales are very high profitable. Profitability. One should also note that uh, we had a little bit low EBIT margin in the quarter, and the main driver of that was we had to take a bad debt provision linked to the changes of distributor we made in Russia, but that's certainly a one-off that hit the EBIT margin with around 6 million in the quarter. So here you can see the bars here represent the number of instruments sold. The, the pink line is the rolling 12 of consumables. And the, and, the, and the gray line is the rolling 12 of instruments. So we had, for a couple of quarters, a bit weakness in instrument sales, but now we see that that is picking up again, and that's a predictor of future growth for, for the consumables. And again, consumables being more profitable. We, we can see that the consumable growth trend for many quarters has been quite, quite stable, grow, growing nicely. So looking what has been driving the growth in the quarter and in the first half year. We can see it's actually across all product lines. So instruments uh, have grown nicely, uh, consumables, and also our OEM business, we, in which we make consumables for other major players in the industry, and which they sell under their own brand. So we are like a subcontractor. So, so growth in quarter and, and year to date uh, has, has been healthy, and also veterinary products has continued to to grow in a nice way. Looking at growth by region, we could see that the US growth was 18% in the second quarter, uh, uh, driven also a lot by our OEM business. Uh, we see that Asia continues to be a strong contributor as well, uh, and Latin America also a very strong contribution to the growth, actually 91% growth in Latin America compared to previous year, which is, which is very nice. However, in Africa and Middle East, we saw a little bit of a drop in the quarter, but year to date, it's, it's more or less flat. In, in Africa and Middle East, we have a presence in a few countries. We're not in all, in, all, in all countries in these regions. And we see the deals we make there are oftentimes big tenders, so big 
revenues in one quarter and then nothing in another. So that's a bit of a sluggishness in that. And those of you who follow us a little bit, bit may have noticed a little bit of weakness in the gross margin compared to, uh, to the previous year, and I want to explain that a little bit more. This is a bit of a busy slide, but the main message here is uh, there was a time when we had fewer instruments sold, and this is the, uh, the, the blue bars are the number of instruments sold. So in, in the end of 17 and early 18, uh, not so many instruments sold. And then you can see that the blue line here, the gross margin was quite high, 40, 52, 48, 47, 49 percent. Um, but we were concerned about a low number of instrument sales because that's a predictor of future growth. So we, we have been investing to drive more instrument sales. And so we could see in the second half of 18, instrument sales started to increase again, higher levels in the blue bars. But we also saw that the Asian market became more important for us. So here, this is the number of the share of instruments to the Asian market that increased to uh, in, in the area of 70% of all instruments in this period went to the Asian market, but there the, mar the margins are a bit less. So we saw that it, uh, that also impacted the gross margin. So this is important to understand that big instrument sales and big instrument sales to Asia in particular does push down the gross margin a little bit, but it is something that will drive uh, business in the future with consumables. So to understand our business model a little bit more, we can see that if we sell an instrument um, in year one, we can enjoy for probably eight to ten years uh, consumable sales. Uh, and the, if we sell the instrument at around 35,000 on average to the distributor, we can expect around 6,500 kronas of, of consumables per instrument in year. That means over the lifetime of the instrument, 60% of revenues will come from, from, the, uh, from the consumables, the recurring revenue. And actually 75% of the profit will come from that. So, so instrument sales is important, but we can, we can handle a lower margin on that because we know over time we'll make a lot of profits from the consumables going forward. And so quality systems are quite important to us. Uh, we take compliance and regulations quite seriously, and that's the highest priority for all departments within the company. Some of you have followed us, you know that we, we got a uh, warning letter from the FDA uh, in uh, early, uh, late 2018. And we've been working very closely with the, with the FDA to address the concerns that they had uh, with our processes. It's important to note, though, that uh, they had no concerns with the quality of the actual product, or there were no, uh, there were no indication of any, of any adverse events of any kind. This is related to our internal processes. So we have to improve those, and, we, and we've been working um, together with the FDA on an action plan to improve these things. And uh, the action plan is completed in this, in this quarter, third quarter of 2019. And, um, and we also got an, a follow-up inspection by the FDA in July. And that inspection uh, went quite well. It's not perfect, but a strong improvement over the recent one. And we're now working with the FDA to address those remaining issues. And we believe the, the, the dialogue is good. However, it's hard for us to make any type of prediction on when we can expect uh, a conclusion of this issue. Um, but we are certainly committed to it. And we feel confident in saying that we are making good progress. The result of the inspection is an improvement over the last time. And that's been the case for other authorities that also inspect us. For example, um, European authorities. So in the, in the quarter, we have had many activities in, in, in the field. We have made a change in our Eastern European distribution structure to improve um, um, the, the support that the customer gets and also work on sales and margins. So we have seen growth and improved margins from those actions. Uh, we have entered a preferred vendor agreement with the biggest distributor in the US market, something we're very proud of. And this has also required uh, that, that vendor to remove one of our competitors from their preferred vendor program. So this is a step forward for us. 
and we have been building commercial and marketing resources to better market what you have seen as a much bigger product portfolio now with many recently launched products. We have launched the, the, the two new five-part systems in, and it, we have seen a strong growth coming from those uh, uh, since the beginning of the year. Uh, we talked about the Quintus system where we had some quality issues, they have been addressed. We see veterinary markets growing quite well with the new recently launched products. And with the Spinit system, the multi-test system that we mentioned, we can see that it's attracting a lot of interest at, at the relevant uh, conferences in the field. Uh, and um, we are excited about the potential of that system. So, uh, if you look at our business and the changes we have made to drive growth and profitability, it's important to note uh, how one can expect the impact of these. Of course, this is, the, this is the column with revenue growth impact. So these are all growth initiatives. And when we drive the veterinary market growth, we can expect to see revenues going up, but also margins, because this is a high margin business for us. Distributed products, which uh, work as an important addition to the portfolio to meet the customer and distributor needs, they will drive revenue growth, but some of them come at a lower margin than our core own developed products. So that is something to keep in mind. As we develop the distributor network and improve its efficiency, that will uh, improve the profitability as well. Uh, as we see strong growth in Asia and in India in particular, when we do sell the instruments in India, uh, those prices are quite low. So in, in a quarter with high instrument sales to India, we can expect a, um, a negative margin impact from that. But again, we do see after the instrument is sold, reagent sales will come at a healthy margin. And then finally, cost reduction efforts, uh, including uh, a regionali regionalized approach to manufacturing of primarily re reagents, we can see that that is something that can generate both growth and uh, cost reductions. However, since we've been focusing a lot on the FDA issue, we have not had time to drive these things with full force, but we do think that going forward, we will have more time to drive uh, cost efficiency efforts, and that will be a higher priority. So to sum it all up, we have spent a lot of time in the company to work on uh, the quality processes, and we have made significant investment and also improved quite a bit, as confirmed by the recent um, audits. So we do feel, even though the problem is not resolved, we do think we, do think we are on the right track. We also uh, had a high priority to get back from the flat revenue development of 2018 to back into growth. And we are pleased to see that in the first two quarters we have had a strong growth for all products in all regions pretty much. And that is something we will continue to drive, but it, we are happy to be back in the growth trend again. Now, profitability and cash flow will become a higher priority for us once we are in, back in the growth mode. Uh, and we have a little bit more time to drive cost uh, reduction work and price, price increases as well in certain markets because um, we do sell in, in quite a few markets in Swedish kronas. So just because the, the currency uh, of the krona weakness doesn't automatically mean increased sales for us. So we have to renegotiate prices in some markets. And so we're doing that, but it, it, there's a certain lead time to those price negotiations. And we continue to work on growth initiatives and optimizing our distributor structure. So with that, uh, I wrap up and open up for questions. Thank you very much, uh, Fredrik. Uh, so you've, you've had now roughly a year of, of some margin pressure uh, for obvious reasons. You've talked about a few of them. Uh, it's on a positive note. It's, it's nice to see that you're back on growth. Uh, so if, if we look at sort of the medium term, uh, what would you say are uh, both the opportunities to reach, let's say, uh, your high 40s again in terms of gross margins and also the main risks in, in, in reaching that? Okay, I think there are a couple of factors that we expect will help us increase the margins, even though it's probably not going to be dramatic, but there will be a gr we hope to see a gradual increase. And that's, of course, increased uh, consumable sales for all those instruments installed 
in India, uh, for example, and that was the biggest tender we ever won, 650 instruments. Uh, the, the price uh, renegotiations, price increases, some of them we have already completed. And then we have also the, the cost reduction efforts that we now can focus a little bit more on since we, we do think that the, the quality work uh, you know, is, is now going to be a little bit less going forward. Uh, so that's important. And then finally, continue the work with driving uh, growth initiatives in higher margin markets like Eastern Europe, mm. US and so on. So those are some of the positives. On the negative side, of course, we, we, um, there are also risks. You know, we, it may take time to renegotiate prices. Um, you know, when we bin, win big orders in Asia, we're happy because it's growth business, but we also know it will have some negative impact on gross margin short term. Mm. So there may be more of those. Even we will be much more uh, cautious on the price. We will not be as aggressive on price as been the case uh, previously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you dare to put your sort of the order backlog into perspective here? It's just to see where you are in terms of perhaps the Indian orders, uh, in terms of sales versus region sales. Uh, okay, well, so um, we don't really communicate about, uh, you know, giving like guidance on the third quarter or something like that, but we, we do think that it, there's a, there seems to be a, a healthy trend <coughs> we can, that we notice in Q1 and Q2, and we of course hope and think that that will continue. Um, we then hope to see, and uh, it's our expectation to see, that all of those instruments to India, for example, really getting installed, the, the staff getting trained, and, and the volumes coming up uh, for in, in reagents. And even though prices on instruments are low in India, the price on reagents and the margins on reagents is, is, is healthy <laughs> in India for sure. Yeah. And we also saw here in, in your remarks that uh, you grew nicely in both Asia, of course, and, and Latin America, but also in the US you've been yes. growing. Um, and now with the preferred vendor agreement that you have in place, what should we expect or what do you expect of, of, the, of the US market here? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we haven't seen an effect of that short term. I think it's a little bit of a period to get it up and running, you know, to train all the staff yeah. and get the marketing materials in, in, in order and so on. But uh, over time, we do think that that will help us generate growth. Exactly how quick it will be, it, it depends. But I also think we have to be, we have to be uh, open about the fact that some competitors see us getting that preferred vendor agreement uh, as a threat to themselves, so they mm. will they're likely to also do countermeasures in terms of marketing drives and whatnot. Mm. And uh, I have to touch upon uh, the FDA situation as well, uh, of course. <laughs> yes, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're, you're finalizing your work here in, in Q3. Uh, and I know that you, you said that, that the time frame here is a bit uh, tricky for you to, to, to know when, when, uh, when this could be over for your, uh, for your part. But, but is there some type <laughs> Coming back to it, uh, <laughs> what, what, what can investors expect in terms of any type of feedback from, from the day you're done here in Q3 until at least some type of feedback is getting back to you from the FDA? Yes, so our action plan, you're correct, the action plan uh, will be completed in, in the third quarter of 2019. Uh, and we have a frequent dialogue with the FDA about that. They did come and visit us in July already, which was actually quicker than we thought. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we do view that as a good sign. And we also do think that the results of the audit and, and the audits from uh, European bodies are indicating strongly that we are improving. Uh, I do think that once, uh, once the FDA has had the chance to digest all the information that we provided them, uh, there will be an opportunity for us for some kind of interaction. We have asked for, uh, for, for that, and they will come back to us to see exactly what that will look like. And, th and then we don't really know what the next step mm. is. I mean, it could be a meeting, it could be uh, exchange of information, it could be uh, another visit. Of course, Those yeah. things are very hard for us to mm. understand. But it, it is, uh, we're committed to improving, we're committed to, to meeting the requirements that the FDA has, uh, and uh, we're investing in that, and so we're, we're doing everything in our power. We're looking forward to see more of that. Yes, <laughs> you will. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.